some people. Oh, okay. Welcome to class, um, the course BC314 Media and uh, Technology in Ministry. Uh, we're just going to pray together and uh, get started. Can uh, somebody please um, unmute your mic and just pray with the class? Uh, I'm sure the others will join in uh, soon. Could somebody pray, please? Okay, so we'll pray. Right. Father God, we come before you, your throne once again. Father God, Father, we just say thanking you, Father God, to the subject and thanking you, Father God, to your work, Father God. Father God, help the all the students, they can join, Father God, the subject. And give your wisdom and knowledge, Father God, that we can understand the subject and apply to your kingdom work. Thank you, Father. Almighty Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, I hope the others will be able to join in. Okay, so um, last, so we are now in the section where, um, thanks, Conan, for connecting back. Uh, we are in the section now where we are talking about digital equipment. Um, uh, basically, just I'm just sharing with you some information that will be useful uh, when you have to make uh, decisions in this area. Uh, last week, we talked a little bit about the software and uh, the video editing software and so on. Uh, I know there were some problems uh, with my connection, so part of it, I think, was lost. And uh, Anyway, I'll just quickly review that document. Then today, I want to share some, some thoughts about cameras. You know, uh, of course, part of uh, the media ministry uh, you will have to take a lot of uh, pictures. So talk a little bit about cameras. And uh, you, know, uh, you know, each of you may or may not be using the cameras. Most likely you won't be using it because you will be probably busy uh, ministering the word, preaching or ministering to people. Uh, but what actually happens, uh, you know, especially in, 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 in the local church context is, at some point, you know, they will come to, you know, people who are handling media in your church will come to say, you know, we need to buy a camera. We need to, yeah, we need a good camera for the church. So that's when they will have, you You know, you'll get involved. Uh, even though you're focusing on the ministry, you know, you have to make a decision what camera to buy. And so at least you should have some idea about that. Then we will get into talking about uh, the public address system, the PA system. It's good to have an understanding of how it works and what are some things to look out for. So at least you can tell the people, you know, your media people, uh, whether they are volunteers or whether they are uh, others, um, you know, look out for these things uh, when you're talking about uh, the public, the PA system, which is the mic and the speakers and the mixer and all of that. You know, what do you look out for? So we're going to cover, uh, we're going to try to cover as much as we can, and we'll continue this uh, tomorrow, All right? So let me go ahead and share the PDF. And uh, I'm, you know, I'm just sharing it at a level from which uh, you would need to make decisions, you know? So uh, we talked about this digital equipment. We, talked, started talking, we spoke about graphics software, and I've given you the names and, you know, if your volunteers or people come to you and say, we need graphic software, you can tell them to start using some of the free versions. And these are really good actually, like Canva and uh, Adobe Express. Uh, these are good and they can get started with this. And later on, you know, if you want to, you can buy uh, licensed versions. Similarly with the video editing software, you can tell people, you know, get started with using the free uh, video editing software. You don't always have to go directly to buy a professional. Start with the free ones, uh, which are very good. And then uh, you can later on, you know, when you have money and when you have people who are experienced, you can buy licensed version. Otherwise, just do editing with uh, the free ones, right? And uh, uh, we just used, we mentioned some of the terms or terminologies people will uh, uh, mention when they are talking to you. Uh, about uh, video editing, color, you know, and so on, so that you just understand, you have some idea of uh, what is happening when um, when they're doing video editing, right? 
Similarly with desktop publishing, that means if you want to create brochures, magazines, um, uh, you want to create a, you know, a, a newspaper for your ministry, uh, a, a digital newspaper, like a, a newsletter with a few pages in it. You know, and a lot of these things can be done online for free. Uh, so you can use these, uh, you know, you can use the Creative Cloud Express and uh, do it online and create these brochures and so on with, with nice graphics and everything, right? So, uh, and for media presentation, uh, this is what uh, some of you, you know, are familiar with uh, Pro Presenter or Easy Worship uh, that you could uh, use for media presentation. So we did this last week. Today, we'll talk a little bit about camera photography and then get into uh, the oil of PA system. So uh, it's generally speaking, you know, most smartphones today, many of us have these smartphones, uh, which can, uh, can take good photographs. Um, and so this, you know, to get started, that would be more than enough. Um, and typically, we recommend people, you know, you know, do your shoots in a horizontal or landscape mode. Uh, you can set it uh, to about uh, 1920 to 1080 pixels. 30 frames per second is, you know, a typical good way of recording or taking, sorry, pictures or videos. Of course, we'll talk about videos later. And just basic, make sure that there's lighting and noise, uh, reduced noise. Now, at some point, you know, your people may come to you and they say, no, no, uh, phones are okay, but, you know, we need to buy a good camera and, uh, you know, uh, they will come to you uh, uh, with that request. So then uh, I just want, you know, share some information so that you know, okay, how to make a decision. Of course, the main goal is, or the main reason will be, they'll say we need better quality photos if we are going to use those photos in our brochures or sometimes for print, especially if you want to print flyers, handbills, or you want to use them in your website or uh, in, uh, in, in social media. You know, they said the quality of our photos uh, need to be better. Uh, and, and that's a very, very valid reason. I mean, smartphones are good. Um, and today many smartphones can take uh, good pictures, but sometimes when you need quality beyond what a smartphone can give, then yeah, you have to go to purchasing a good camera to document and record and uh, so on. So you would look for the quality. Um, you look for also, you know, what is easy to use, uh, how much control you can have over the settings, and uh, do you have a, you know, room to grow? So if you're investing in a camera, you want to be able to, you know, use that um, for the long term and what are the opportunities you have, can you, you know, change the lens and so on. And of course, the price will be also a factor um, that you will look at. So I want to just give you an overview because, uh, you know, some, like I said, sometimes people come to you to make final decision and you just need to have uh, some idea. So smartphone cameras, which all of us are already using on our phones, uh, the advantage is you know, it's very convenient. Um, you can shoot photos anywhere, it's easy to share. Uh, uh, some constraints are it's, it's a fixed lens. The lens is fixed. You can zoom in and out to minimal using software, uh, your, your uh, photo app, you can do that. But generally the, you know, the fact is the lens is fixed. So there's only so much uh, you can do in terms of movement in and out and uh, image quality. Is reasonably good, but it may not be as good, or in some cases, it may not meet the requirement for the final use that people are looking for. So it's basic and it's good to get started with. You know, we can start off using with phone cameras. The next level up is um, uh, what, what we call as point and shoot cameras. Um, uh, these are simple cameras. They're usually very small and you can easily carry them, but they have a fixed lens. They have a, you know, just one lens permanently attached. Uh, you can't change the lens, but what you can do is you can zoom in and out of the lens, which uh, you cannot do in a phone camera. You can do here, the phone camera, the software will, the app will let you do a little bit, but here, you know, the, it's a fixed lens, but the lens can move in and out. So it gives you a wider range compared to a smartphone camera. Um, 
the point and shoot camera, of course, the quality may be, is better than smartphone, but not as good as the DSLR camera. So, um, the, so basically what happens is in these cameras, the size of the sensor inside the camera, which records the image, which captures the image uh, is different. So DSLR cameras have the biggest sensor in sitting inside, okay? So they capture the most light, the most details, and that's why they are, uh, you know, very good. Whereas, you know, so point and shoot cameras, they have a small sensor captures. So how much of light you capture, how much of that image you're capturing will determine the quality of the image, right? So um, the sensor inside the camera is, is small, and uh, uh, it may not give you manual controls. That means, uh, you know, uh, to fine tune you. So the, there are three things that determine, you know, the quality of the image, uh, image capture, the shutter speed, the aperture and ISO. I'll explain that a little later. Uh, you cannot have a, a manual control. You cannot adjust it manually. M many of them have autofocus. So uh, you just have a point and shoot. Um, you can zoom the, zoom the lens in and out, but beyond that, the other things are usually automatic. So you don't have as much control, but the advantage is it's cheaper and it's easier to carry around. Then you go up the next level. You know, the, the best would be of course DSLR cameras, but then you have in between, you have what are known as mirrorless cameras. So um, in, in the DSLR, the reason DSLRs are a little bulky is because they have a mirror inside sitting inside the camera and it allows you to actually look through the lens. So the image coming in through the lens is on the mirror and you're able to see it. So you're actually able to see through the lens what your image is gonna be. I'm talking about a DSLR camera and the sensor that records the image is also bigger, larger sensor. So two differences. It has a mirror inside so you can actually see through the lens and it also has a sensor that records it. Now, in a mirrorless camera, the mirror is not there. So you're only going to see a picture of uh, it dis displayed for you on a, usually on an LCD screen. So, and, uh, and also the, the sensor is much smaller than DSLR. But the advantage of a mirrorless camera, it's much smaller and lighter to carry around. And, uh, uh, it also provides interchangeable lens. So this is an advantage over point and shoot. That means you can change your lens. You want you know, a wide angle lens, you want different lens, you can change it. Whereas in a point and shoot camera, you cannot. So the mirrorless camera is like one level up uh, than the point and shoot, but it's not as, you know, so the, the, as, uh, as high end as the DSLR. So typically if you can afford to, you would like to buy a DSLR camera for the following reasons. One is, uh, like I said, you can actually look through the lens and see what your actual image is going to look like. It gives you the most accurate image. Uh, it has a very large sensor, so it's going to record as much of the image as possible. All the light coming in, it's going to record it, capture it. Uh, you can also have interchangeable lens. You can change the lens as you wish. So as of today, I know all of this may change next year because, you know, of course, technology around us is changing. But as of today, uh, if you're going to buy a camera and if you can afford it, you'll, uh, it's recommended that you go for a good DSLR camera. Uh, but then you have some other options if you want, uh, if you don't want to spend so much, right? Um, the in terms of image exposure, that means you know, the image capture uh, a, a, a camera that allows you to operate in manual mode is best because then you can have full control over the aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, the light that comes in, right? So these are three things your, uh, your media person will be looking at uh, when they are adjusting the camera and just explained it to you. So uh, aperture is how much you open the lens, right? So if you open the lens more, obviously more light comes in. If more light comes in, uh, you know, your uh, image is going to be brighter. Uh, and uh, Or you make the aperture small if you want to darken the image. 
So more light, bigger aperture, more light, brighter image, smaller aperture, less light, darker image. So you're adjusting the brightness of the image. So uh, the apertures usually you know, go by this number, f by one by four, uh, f by 22. So if the number is bigger, uh, the uh, so if the number is bigger, the smaller. That means you're dividing f by 22. So it's going to be a smaller aperture. Another important, another thing that determines is the shutter speed. You know how quickly can the shutter open and close, right? So it'll all depend. You know, so you need flexibility. Sometimes you want to keep the shutter open longer because more light can come in. Sometimes it's so bright, you don't want to let too much light come in. So you want to quickly close the shutter, right? So depending on the ambience and the light, your shutter speed is, uh, you know, you need to have different shutter speeds. So here you can see it is one out of 2000, means it's very fast. The shutter can open and close very fast. Whereas uh, here, the shutter speed is slower. Um, the third thing is the sensitivity to light. So ISO stands for uh, how sensitive is the sensor to light, right? And uh, uh, if you uh, have a higher ISO, uh, it means that you can shoot in dark situations because it will pick up even little light, it'll pick it up. Right? It's good. It's good enough for the sensor. So the higher ISO means dark conditions, you can shoot without a flash. But the only thing is it's if it's because it's more sensitive, it'll pick up uh, more noise, uh, everything it'll pick up, right? So you have a trade off there. So in adjusting your camera, you're looking at uh, the aperture, how much do you want to open? How qu quickly do you want to open? And how sensitive you want the sensor to be to the light? So you adjust these things basically so that you adjust, you know, the brightness of the photo and uh, the depth of where you want to focus on uh, so on so that you can get a good picture, right? So this is just information for us to know. Now, uh, other things that you, as far as pictures are concerned is uh, you talk about megapixels. So, it's talking about resolution. Now, megapixels are important because they determine the quality or the sharpness of the image, right? Now, especially if you're going to print something, you need a good mega, you know, a good, a higher megapixel so that you, it can be very sharp. So you will look at something as eight megapixels or 12, uh, or if you, you know, if you're uh, using it, using those images in video, later on, you know, if you want to create a video of different things, obviously you want a very high quality, sharp image. So you look for something with a higher resolution, you know, so 12, 20, so on. Now, some, some nowadays, even uh, smartphones better, you know, uh, uh, smartphones are able to give you good megapixel, but the camera, camera of course, will help you uh, get uh, very higher resolution, right? The, the other thing that you would also think of is uh, the uh, frames per second, is uh, how, how many photos can the camera take every second? So you normally would keep it uh, at a decent, you know, say 30 frames per second uh, when you're shooting a video. So at least the quality of the video or, or of using that same camera for video or picture um, can be good. And uh, another important thing is um, the advantage with cameras is uh, uh, especially the DSLR and the mirrorless cameras, they can save the image as a raw file. Our phone camera or point and shoot will usually save it as JPEG only. That means once you've got it, got the image, uh, there's not too much you can do to work with the image. Right. Whereas if you have the raw file, then there's a lot of post processing touching up that you can do. You can play with the lighting, play with the colors and, 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 and you can make the image better with software. 
right? So that's the advantage of using a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. You can, uh, because they, they give you the raw file uh, format and you can work with it, okay? So lastly, there are a lot of brands that are there, Canon, Panasonic, uh, so on. Uh, you, you know, so the prices would vary based on the brand as well. If you want more information, you can definitely read up online, so on. Okay, so what we would, what I would suggest is, uh, especially in the ministry, of course, you will start off using your smartphone, and then uh, you try to go, uh, try to buy a DSLR camera if uh, if that's within, that's something you can afford, uh, and um, make use of a DSLR camera, and then over time you could buy lens you know you could you just have to buy more different lens for different uses um, uh, that will help get you know different qualities of pictures and different kinds of pictures that you're shooting for uh, the ministry right? but we can all start with using our smartphones and then uh, think of going up into this Okay, let me just uh, talk a little bit on, uh, on on audio. I'll go to the next part. Then I'll take questions before we close. Uh, you know, we can have some discussions. The next part of um, the PA, I um, mean, next part of the digital equipment is the sound system, the PA system. Now, this is very important, you know, especially when you're having a church service, um, conference, a seminar, your sound equipment is very really important. Now, uh, I will give an introduction. We'll go into the details next class. Um, now, this is something, you know, uh, we just for us to understand. Uh, basically, if you're looking at, suppose this is a stage, you're on, on the stage here, and this is your auditorium, the people sitting everywhere here. We could have, you know, speakers and mics and everything set up but if, if things are not set up properly, what people hear will not be clear enough. So for example, you look at the dark red, that is where the sound is optimal. Wherever it's yellow, it's like, okay, people are not going to hear properly. So even though we've got a PA system set up here, uh, and imagine there are people sitting throughout this auditorium uh, people are sitting in the red or slightly, you know, orangish. They're the ones who are going to be hearing well. The others who are sitting in the yellow and, the, you know, the green or even in the uh, light orange you know, here may not be, for them, you know, the sound will be very bad. Uh, they may not be able to listen to what is going on, you know, what is being, what is coming off the stage whether it's the preaching or worship. So ideally, what you, we want is, uh, we want to have something as much as possible where, you know, where people are seated, you want to have a good audio, a good sound field. Now, even in this diagram, uh, or in this particular picture, you see how people sitting here in the yellow part, here and all the yellow part here, uh, yellow part here and even at the back, they are not going to be able to have good sound uh, just because of the, you know, the way it's set up. Uh, there are a lot of factors that go into it. One is, of course, the sound system itself, which we are going to talk about. Then the other is the acoustics of, um, and the other is uh, the mixing, how sound is mixed inside the auditorium. And then also the design of the auditorium itself. Now, the design of the auditorium, you can't do anything about it because it's already built. Uh, if you're renting a hall or a, you know, a building, it's already done and they, that is the architect's responsibility. But what we can do is have a good sound system in place so that people can uh, you know, uh, enjoy, whether it's the worship or whether it's the preaching, uh, the sound field throughout the auditorium has to be monitored and done well. Okay. Uh, I remember, you know, when we were in our previous location, St. Joseph's, 
<laughs> we had some problems. And there would be people who are sitting in front. They'll come and complain. And uh, for whatever reason, everybody, you know, thinks you have to tell the pastor. So they come and say, oh, you know, this sound is too loud for me. Too loud. I can't sit here. But then there are people who are sitting in the back of the auditorium. Their complaint is, I can't hear. It's not coming. It's, I, the sound is not reaching, especially in the balcony. Uh, we had a balcony there in Joseph's. So people in the balcony will say, I can't hear. People in front will say, it's too loud. And so, you know, we had a problem. Uh, how are we going to, you know, make the sound uh, uniform, the sound feel uniform in our auditorium so that people are comfortable uh, when they come to worship God and when they come to hear the message, right? So some guidelines uh, is this, and this is something you can check as a, as a pastor. Uh, is the sound level uh, also, not only is the sound field important, how the sound in the auditorium is distributed, but also the sound level, you know. Uh, if the sound is, level is too hard, uh, uh, it, it will be damaging for the ear. Okay, so if you look at this little chart, um, so uh, th this is all in decibels. Um, so there is background noise. So there is always, you know, some noise, something happening uh, in the auditorium, outside the auditorium, all this background noise. So that's why we need a PA system. You know, people coming in, people moving, all that is background noise. We don't want people to be disturbed. So we need a PA system so that the sound of what is being preached or uh, the, um, the worship should be at a little higher level than the background noise. So it starts at 45 dB. But at the same time, you don't want it to be too high. It shouldn't be more than 85 because it'll become uh, painful for people. And I remember some years ago, uh, I, I went into a church place. Uh, this was in the US. I was spending, a few, I was there for a few months, um, not a few months, a few a month and a half. So I was attending, I thought I'd go attend a church, very well known a church, they had a small church plant, went in, the noise was so hard, it was so painful, I, I couldn't sit inside, it was a small gathering, 200 people, I couldn't sit inside the auditorium, yeah, I mean, the, there's a small auditorium, it was so loud, uh, and I, I was even sitting at the back, I, you know, but it was so painful on the ear, you know, and uh, I tried to tell them, hey, you know, this is kind of actually bad for people sitting inside the auditorium because a normal range should be between, you know, 45 to 65. Keep it at that dB. It shouldn't go beyond 85, right? If you go beyond 85, it's damaging the eardrums of the, of the audience. You know, and uh, and and so uh, if it goes higher than that, it can actually cause harm to the ears of the people. Right. So you want the sound field to be uniform. You also want the sound level to be kept within this uh, healthy range, forty-five to sixty-five, or keep it around sixty-five, but don't go beyond eighty-five. Now it's very easy to measure, right? You download the app. Uh, the sound level meter or decibel meter, put it on your phone and just turn it on anywhere in the auditorium and you can easily measure uh, what the sound level is. So it's a very simple thing to do. You can have an app on your phone and you can measure the dB level. You download the uh, sound level meter or decibel meter onto your phone and just check. Now, this is also something to pay attention to. Like you don't want to just turn up the sound and you know, cause damage to people's uh, hearing, uh, but you want to keep it at a very comfortable level uh, around 65 dB, all right? And uh, so what we will talk about is, okay, these are the components that go into a sound system. Um, I'll just show you one more picture and then we will stop. Uh, so basically what, how, what, what goes on inside the uh, auditorium? So you've got your speakers. So uh, here I'm, we have just shown two speakers, but you've got your speakers and you've got your mics. So the sound coming in from your mic 
they go to a mixer, the front of house, of, uh, FOA to sense front of house. They go into a mixer and then they go into these uh, uh, speakers for people to listen. So the person sitting here, the front of house console, is mixing the sound that's coming in from all the mics that are, people are using, uh, mixing it, sending it back to the speakers. Uh, we just shown two speakers, there will usually be much more. He controls what's going out in the speakers, but the speakers have to be positioned and you've got to have the right kind of speakers to make uh, create a good sound field in the auditorium and keep the sound level at the optimal level, around 65 dB, keep it at that level. So this person handling the mixer here is responsible for that. And usually what happens is sound goes from here to the broadcast room. And from there, you would send it out to others. Like uh, you may send the uh, output uh, to um, the live stream. So we will talk about how to do the live stream the equipment that's needed. So the sound is going out uh, for live stream. Now you have to adjust the sound differently for people on the live stream. Here, this person is mixing the sound for people inside the auditorium. But how sound is mixed for people on the live stream is very different, right? So this person in handling the broadcast console is mixing sound for a different audience, right? So you're sending, uh, sending it to live stream. Uh, the audio goes out here. Uh, similarly, there'll be a video being sent out. We will talk, we'll give that configuration later. Then there is also uh, somebody doing presentation, right? Uh, they may be playing a video. Uh, they may be presenting uh, various things, which goes out into the auditorium. And as well as there may be uh, others controlling a CCTV or so on. And usually what goes out for streaming can also go out on a CCTV. We have an overflow room, et cetera. So sound has to be adjusted for them as well. So uh, what we will cover in this section is basically the equipment that we need here for the in-house, right? That means for within the auditorium. Then after that, when we talk about live streaming uh, and so on, we will cover what is needed here, all right? So this list here, which we will go through, basically, uh, of course, you need microphones. So you need to know, okay, what are some of the microphones there? Uh, the monitor speakers, the PA speakers, uh, the uh, equalizers that you have and the mixers that you have to mix all the sound and change the sound effects, uh, amplifiers you may need, uh, and whether they're built in to the speakers and so on. And so all of this together, all of these things together will then determine your sound field and your sound level, the acoustics, the what the people hear inside the auditorium. So you need to have some understanding uh, and uh, eventually you will be buying this equipment uh, for your church, your ministry. So we will go through these things so you will know, you know just in the making of the decisions uh, what to do. All right, so today we've just done the introduction part, which is uh, making sure the sound field inside the auditorium is uniform, covers your audience, and also the sound levels are kept at the optimal level. It's very easy to check, put the app on your phone and just tell somebody, hey, just look, you know, go around the auditorium, see the sound levels are okay. Uh, what is sound level in different places? Is it coming through? You can easily check it, and then uh, and then we will get into talking about you know these different uh, components that are needed for the PA system inside the auditorium. Okay, I'm going to stop here. And uh, any questions on what we covered, like either the camera side or the introduction to the PA side? Any questions? Um, are you all following me, or did, is it getting too technical? It's all clear. Any questions? Thomas, Conan, Dave, Siddharth? Yeah, okay, got it. 
Rory, when we do practically only, we can able to understand more. I guess. But... Yes, yes, yes. True. Yeah. I, this is a lot of uh, information. Uh, but uh, you know, uh, at least uh, you you've got some thoughts to keep. Uh, nail, you know, when you go inside, when you practically start doing things, just uh, remember some of these things and try it out. Uh, it's not uh, difficult, you know. Uh, try these things out and use it, and and especially guide your people, your media team, volunteers. Give them guidance so they can make use of it. Okay. So tomorrow we will get into the equipment. Uh, I don't want it to become too technical, but enough for you to know that okay, when I buy a mic, I must think about this. And I buy a mixer, I must think about this, or at least tell my people, think about this before you make your purchase. Okay, so like that, we will cover uh, uh, the PA system. Then we will go into the other part, like video, live streaming, very important because these days, uh, uh, you know, people expect uh, live streaming. So we'll cover those things. Okay, let's close. Um, just request somebody to pray and then. Oh, okay, if there are no questions, we can close. Okay. Somebody can pray and we'll dismiss. Okay. We'd like to pray and then we will close. Thomas, why don't you pray and close? Sure, I'll pray first. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you, Dad. As we uh, grow, the kingdom of God is growing, church is growing. The media and technology is very important and powerful thing where we can teach people effectively as we learn certain things about the sound and cameras. Father, help us to keep this in mind when we do it practically. Let this help us in our King Church Ministries, Father. Let your presence be with us. Keep us safe. We thank you, we praise you for this wonderful time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everybody. I'll uh, see you tomorrow. Uh, have a good uh, afternoon. God bless. Bye.